Should we contend for our faith, our biblical faith, with Catholics? Because some people think we shouldn't. They say that, no, Catholics believe in the same Jesus, the same God, the same Holy Spirit. But what about all those doctrines that the Catholic Church teaches that aren't biblical? Purgatory, the Pope, Mary, sacraments, their view on salvation? Join us for the answer today on why we should contend for biblical faith. Today I want to ask a question. Should we contend for our biblical faith with Catholics? because a lot of people actually think that we shouldn't. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna play a clip from our Contending for the Faith conference that I did with Mike Winger. And just if you're Catholic and you're watching this, you need to know that I did not do this particular conference because I'm trying to beat up on Catholics or try to just be rude or any of those things. We're doing this conference because Jude, who is the brother of Jesus, said this. In Jude 3, he said, dear friends, Although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Before the Catholic Church even started, Jude said, we have to contend for the one true faith. But in order to understand what that means, we have to understand what that faith is. And what we know throughout the rest of the Bible is that that faith is Jesus alone. You cannot add anything to what Jesus did on the cross. You can't add works, you can't add sacraments, you can't add you know, just being a good person. Because if you do those things, you have just done what Jude says that we need to contend for. So when we decided to do our Contending for the Faith conference, uh, we, we dealt with Mormonism and we dealt with Jehovah Witnesses and I added Catholicism to it. And a lot of people did not like that because Catholicism is not considered a cult like Mormonism and Jehovah Witness, but they do have very, very serious unbiblical doctrines that they hold to, especially when it comes to salvation and when it comes to the truth about Jesus. Now, for, for a lot of things, we know that the Catholic Church does believe the same. But when you add things on to Jesus alone, I don't think we as followers of Christ can just ignore that. We just can't. I don't think biblically we can ignore that. And I think that's exactly what Jude was talking about. Contend for the faith that is Jesus alone. And that's what we're doing in this Contending for the Faith conference. We're pulling out little clips so we can do one by one uh, questions that you may have. So. The question we want to ask is, should we? Should we talk to Catholics about our biblical Christian faith? So watch this with Mike Winger. Is that in this life, there's all these rules that we have to abide by that aren't really suggestions. And so it's kind of the same with what we're talking about today with this whole conference. Like God has, like they're not suggestions on how to get to heaven and how to spend eternity with him. It's really like his way only. And so that's really the reason why we wanted to do this conference. So we're not bashing anyone's religion. So we'll talk about that for a second. Oh yeah. There's in fact, to be honest, um, this is to me one of the hardest topics to cover Catholicism because we have so much we agree on. And in so many ways it's, it, it is part of the Christian tradition. Yet there's a, there are also important areas, really important areas where there is disagreement and it's major disagreement. And so it, it's, it's like this challenge. You see Catholics on one side who you were like, I love you and I want to have a relationship with you and I want to affirm you as much as I can, you know, with, with truth. And on the other side, I say, but then there's this thing called Catholicism that has specific doctrines and teachings and has made claims, claims about the whole earth, claims about the whole church, claims about salvation and a bunch of stuff that's that we have to look at and we have to examine and it, it ends up being a, a hairy issue, but it's too important not to talk about. And so many people won't even address it. Even guys I know who are great at theology, you know, great at 
studying and thinking about these types of things, they won't talk about Catholicism. They're just like, yeah, I don't deal with that issue. Right. And, um, and so I want to hopefully not be harsh and judgmental and cruel about it or misrepresent and also not pretend like these things don't actually matter when they really do. They really do. And I think that's the thing. Like when Jude said, like, you've got to contend for the faith that was once delivered Mm -hmm. to me, like, what does that mean? Which actually will, will bring about our first question, which we've done, I think each one of these segments, like, first of all, even just go, what is the faith once delivered? Because people Mm -hmm. are going to be confused at that right away. Yeah. So we get this actually in, in the book of Jude, where it says that we should contend earnestly for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. And that phrase, the faith, we, we often think is talking about your personal uh, act of believing, but it's not, it, it's actually talking about like the doctrines, like the beliefs, the theology, you might say of that was once and for all delivered to the saints about who Jesus is and how he saves us. These are kind of like the primary things. And so we have like Romans 1 16, for instance, Paul, his attitude about the faith, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. <clears throat> so that we're, we're seeing that you're saved by these, these, this message of the gospel. The gospel is, is like a list of truths, you know, um, it's things that we're supposed to believe about Jesus, about his death and resurrection, about our sin and about uh, how he saves us. So these things are pretty important in believing this gospel in responding to God's truth that he's revealed, you relationally become joined to him, you become saved. So these are, in other words, it's kind of like saying, if I, if I handed you a pill and I said, you're going to die unless you take this pill. And let's say that it's true. How important is that pill? Right. That's pretty important. How important are the ingredients in that pill that it's made just the right way? Mm-hmm. That's pretty important. And yeah. so that's like the faith is like these core, you know, central issues of Christianity that we, we, we must hold to, we must fight for, not physically, but we, we have to be committed to and strive to maintain. And you can't and, um, add to yeah. and you can't take away. You can't be like, well, I'm just going to add a few things to it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't want to add or take away. And we don't want to just say like some people do, well, it's just about Jesus. It's not about theology, Mike. It's just about Jesus. And it's like, yeah, but you don't know a single thing about Jesus unless you do theology. Like that's what, that's what G, the word Jesus, unless it has a, a, a theological meaning, it's not about anything. Right. And so, yeah, we, we have, a, um, like, for instance, in, in the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul, he deals with false gospels, in particular, a false gospel that does relate to the conversation we're having today. In Galatians 5, 4, he says, you are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law, you've fallen away from grace. Now, the, the thing that I want to point out about Galatians in particular is that the group of people that are there, they believe in Jesus. They believe in his death and resurrection. They believe in who he is right? There's, Paul's not rebuking them for confusion about the person of Christ. Um, he, the one thing he rebukes them for is that after they thought they were saved by grace, they started adding works and thinking that those works were going to help accomplish their ultimate salvation, that it was required of them. And he effectively, he flips out, right? He apostolically flips out on them and writes Galatians. And he's like, you're severed from Christ. If you would be justified by the law, you've fallen away from grace. So what I'm saying is, it's not just who Jesus is that matters. It's also how he saves. That seems to be a biblical principle that we have to hold to if we're going to be honest with scripture. So every Christian is called to know and fight for this, this, this pill in my, in my metaphor, this pill of essential theology about Jesus and salvation. Hope that helped you today. If you want to know more answers to more questions about the Catholic church, I will put the links below for our two sessions I did with Mike Winger. I'll also put you a link to our difficult question and short answer series. There's lots of questions on there about Mormonism, uh, uh, lots of Catholic. uh, We have lots of other questions. We'll eventually have the Jehovah Witnesses on there. So um, anyway, I hope this series helps you. Have a really good day.